Hey there, interwebs, and welcome back to How Fascinating. This is a wombat, and this is its wombat. It's the fascinating end of the animal, but don't just take my word for it. Wombats are marsupials, and like almost all other marsupials, they have a pouch, also known as a marsupium, which is just Latin for pouch. Some marsupials, such as macropods, kangaroos and wallabies, for example, have forward or upward-facing pouches. This is so that the joey doesn't fall out as mom is on the go, bouncing across the landscape. Wombats, however, aren't really built for bouncing. Instead, they burrow, and as a result, their pouch faces backward so it doesn't immediately fill up with dirt, which would suck for all parties involved. Aside from the forward versus rearward facing pouches, wombats and kangaroos have otherwise fairly similar reproductive systems, and I said all I needed to say about that in the kangaroo video. In brief, female wombats, or wombatinas as they are officially called by me, have two uteruses and three vaginas, and a male wombat, or wombert, has testicles in front of his forked penis, which has barbs on it and we don't know what for. Now that you're properly disturbed, let me tell you about their poop next. It comes in cubes, like stinky D6s. Talk about shooting craps. Puns aside, you're probably wondering what gives. What evolutionary advantage does this present? Because wombats are territorial and use feces to mark their turf, poo with flat sides and sharp corners is less likely to roll away than round shapes, allowing for more effective signaling. I'm sure Australia's many native dung beetles are thrilled by the idea. You might remember that old proverb concerning square pegs and round holes and think that shitting anything with corners would be unpleasant, and you'd be right, but the wombat has a cunning solution to this problem. Square asshole. Or rather, square intestines. Until recently, we weren't 100% sure how wombats produced their platonic solid waste, but no longer. A 2018 study led by Patricia Yang, a postdoctoral fellow in mechanical engineering of all things of Georgia Institute of Technology, found that the variable elasticity at the end of the wombat's large intestines essentially squeezes the fecal matter into its cuboid shape. As it passes through the digestive tract, it also transforms from a liquid to a solid, which is better able to retain its unusual shape as it passes out the other end. Yang believes this preferential elasticity has the potential to be applied to new manufacturing processes. In her own words, we currently have only two methods to manufacture cubes. Cubes. We mold it, or we cut it. Now we have this third method. Speaking as a fellow engineer, I can confirm that this is definitely how our brains work. I'd also like to mention that for this research, Yang and her team received the 2018 Ig Nobel Prize for Physics, and this wasn't her first one. She and fellow cubic poo researcher David Hu had previously won the 2015 Ig Nobel Physics Prize for testing the biological principle that nearly all mammals empty their bladders in about 21 seconds. Strange, but true. In addition to backwards baby wombats and a colon like a Play-Doh extrusion toy, these funny little marsupials are also hiding something else in their butts, and no, it's not cube-shaped baggies of Tasmanian marching powder. It's cartilage. This hardened tissue effectively acts as arse armor. Arse armor? No, never mind. The important information to know is that wombats are a prey species to dingoes, Tasmanian devils, and historically thylacines, also known as Tasmanian tigers, now believed to be extinct. When attacked, a wombat will flee to the safety of its burrow, but they aren't exactly small. Predators can pursue them inside and attack their exposed rear end. That's why they evolved a built-in derriere defense. In the words of Dr. Alice Swinburne of the University of Adelaide, their dermal shield is essentially four fused backbones or plates covered in cartilage, fat, thick skin, and fur. Furthermore, just like Captain America, wombats have developed a technique to use their shields offensively. They have powerful hind legs, which they use to mule kick potential predators in the face, but if that doesn't deter them, the wombats will use those strong leg muscles and reinforced rumps to trap the predator's head against the roof of their burrow, and then crush its skull. Thick thighs save lives? Not these ones. These thighs are a dingo's demise. These thighs shield bash things to death. In light of this knowledge, I would like to propose that we make the wombat the official animal mascot of the year 2020, because this is definitely the year of taking on danger ass first. Speaking of wombat asses, and there's a phrase I bet you never thought you'd hear, they know how to haul it, too. Despite being little pudge nuggets, they can reach top speeds of up to 40 kilometers or 25 miles per hour. For comparison, Usain Bolt tops out at 27 miles per hour, Oscar Pistorius reaches about 25, and Jesse Owens comes in at 21, albeit on a suboptimal running surface. Suffice to say, your average wombat is on the same level as some of the world's greatest sprinters. Also, while we're on the subject of Olympians, I would be remiss to make a video all about how wombat bums are fascinating and not mention Fatso the fat-assed wombat. He was an official, unofficial mascot of the Sydney 2000 Summer Olympic Games, created by local cartoonist Paul Newell and the satirists Roy and H.G. as a protest against the commercialization of the official Olympic mascots, Ollie, Millie, and Sid, whom Roy and H.G. referred to as Ollie, Millie, and Dickhead. 
He proved to be quite popular with both the Australian and international audiences, and he appeared on the winner's dais multiple times alongside Australian medalists. In an ill-fated attempt to prevent him from upstaging their official mascots, the Australian Olympic Committee attempted to ban athletes appearing with him, but the ensuing PR backlash was so harsh that the presidents of both the Australian and the international Olympic committees were forced to distance themselves from the scandal. I guess it all goes to show. Don't mess with wombats. Truly, these little weirdos put the ass in fascinating. Thanks for watching, and have a fascinating day.